banned as a pesticide, classified as a group one carcinogen, and yet somehow it's in our hair. Box braids, twists, cornrows. These styles, primarily done with synthetic hair, are stunning, affordable, and very, very toxic. But get this. Apparently, the extra chemical processing required to get that synthetic hair to mimic texture, to mimic our kinks, coils, and curls, takes the danger to an entirely new level. You don't believe me? Well, actually, you don't have to. Let's investigate. In order to do so, we must go back to the beginning, to the origins of it all. Now, for as long as history dates back, Britain here has been a cornerstone of African culture, a language of its own, representing identity, status, and community. Braids told stories, marked life milestones, and symbolized everything from marital status to tribal affiliations. Did you know black women once used their hair to draw escape maps in Colombia? In the 1800s, enslaved African women forcibly taken to Colombia would communicate with their communities through braided hair, most importantly for planning escapes. For example, a braided hairstyle called the partes, meaning depart in English, would signal that the person wanted to escape. Black women would also record with their braids the obstacles they would encounter on their journeys to help others escape. A river was represented with a braid in the shape of a worm. A bantu knot represented a mountain. And if there were soldiers in any part of the route, they would use really thick braids still known today in the Pacific region of Colombia as tropas, which means troops in English. On top of that, inside the braids, sometimes gold or seas were hidden to ensure they would survive after they escaped. Because of these escape maps of braids, many Africans were able to escape and form the famous free settlements known as palenques. Some of you may have heard of San Basilio de Palenque, which is one of the first free black towns in the Americas. It's also one of the only remaining palenques in Colombia. It can still be visited if you're in the Cartagena region. Today, this rich history of braids is celebrated every year on May 21st at the Afro hairdressing competitions in Cali, Colombia. May 21st is Afro-Colombian Day, but it also marks the abolition of slavery in Colombia in 1851. Historically, these intricate styles were created using natural materials like plant fibers, wool, and even human hair. Materials that generally harmonized with our environment and health. For example, the Himba women of Namibia originally would use woven hair or goat hair for their braids, while in ancient Egypt, materials such as sheep's wool, Vegetable fibers and horse hair were widely used for wigs, with the elite utilizing human hair. But today, a silent evolution has taken place. One that unsurprisingly strayed far from tradition. Synthetic hair, primarily Kanekalon, has replaced these traditional materials globally, offering affordability and convenience. When you go to the market, you want to go buy her? I like the hair. The hair is nice. I like the color. I like the price. Now, am I going to catch fire? <laughs> That's the question you should be asked. Then you will not look for. Does it have 100% canicle on fiber? Oh, no, they see them. Um, there are many instances where you can be in the marketplace now. Somebody is doing sear. You are buying sear and your hair is catching fire. You're not the meat. <laughs> are you the meat? So you don't want to catch fire. You know when you go market, you go to Benda Sele, there's always grades. I'm going to show you that hair can actually catch fire. This one is not caniculon. God have mercy on us. Please make this thing not over catch fire, God, I beg. Are you people seeing it? Hey wolf! Hey wolf! <laughs> I beg! <laughs> I beg! Oh. Don't get that. Get this. Go check the surroundings. You go to check them. They're right 100%. Did they write 100% caniculon? If they're not right, I'll drop them. When I see them, now they say not the catch fire. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But now they see him. A word is enough for the wise. If you know you're not wise, that's good. During this festive season and beyond, use 100% caniculon fiber for all your beautiful braids. Choose Darling, Ultra, and Expression, which are made with 100%.
Isi Kanekalon is marketed as the holy grail of breeding here. It's flame retardant, durable, affordable, and the best part is its ability to mimic textured hair. Now we'll get back to that mimicking textured hair momentarily. Yet beneath the glossy marketing lies an uncomfortable truth. To put it plainly, Synthetic hair is made with a cocktail of toxic chemicals linked to cancers, respiratory issues, and hormonal disruptions. But perhaps what is even more concerning is that synthetic braiding hair that has a resemblance to Afro-textured hair, such as in the case of Kinecolon, undergoes even more extensive processing to replicate this texture. The base materials, which are plastic polymers like acrylonitrile and vinyl chloride, are actually inherently smooth and straight. This essentially means that to achieve the desired texture, manufacturers must employ mechanical crimping to create the zigzag or coiled patterns, which are then chemically set using stabilizers and heat treatments to ensure durability. At first glance, everything seemed pretty standard, pretty normal. But upon further investigation, what was revealed is that these chemical stabilizers actually contain heavy metals, with lead being of primary concern. And I mean, this here, the Connectlon here, was actually tested, and lab results actually revealed that lead was present along with other heavy metals. And the lead and these heavy metals are said to come from these chemical stabilizers. According to a study published in the Journal of Environmental Science and Public Health, Ijere et al., 2022, synthetic hair products contain harmful levels of heavy metals, including lead, cadmium, chromium, zinc, manganese, and iron. Lead was found at 0.36 micrograms per kilogram exceeding the 0.2 micrograms per kilogram safety limit, posing risks of cognitive impairment and organ damage. Cadmium, present in all samples above the 0.02 micrograms per kilogram limit, is linked to kidney failure and cancer. Chromium levels in expression hair attachments were nearly eight times the safe limit, increasing risks of skin and respiratory issues. Iron exceeding 50 micrograms per kilogram in some samples can lead to oxidative stress and organ toxicity. In addition to that, additional alkaline coatings are applied to soften the fibers followed by silicone-based finishes to enhance manageability and to reduce tangling. These processes, which combine heat and chemicals, ensures the durability and style and versatility of Afro-textured synthetic hair, a trait of which synthetic hair prior to did not possess. But it also results in a higher chemical exposure to the braiders and wearers compared to, let's say, straighter synthetic hair. The word ingredients can be replaced by the word chemicals and chemicals by the word poisons. This is a list of the primary ingredients that are utilized in the creation of synthetic braiding hair. We have first acrylonitrile. Acrylonitrile is classified as a probable human carcinogen by the Environmental Protection Agency. It is linked to respiratory problems and cancer. Acrylonitrile also has a history in the field of agriculture where it was utilized as a pesticide. Its use, however, has been banned since due to the negative implications of using such chemicals. Next, we have vinyl chloride. This is known to cause leukemia and liver damage. This is one of the most dangerous ingredients within these fibers. Following that, we have the volatile organic compounds. These compounds are released when synthetic hair is heated during styling. They are known to worsen asthma and harm respiratory health. For many women, synthetic hair is worn for approximately six weeks and for some even more, thus exposing them to these chemicals continually. Many women resort to an apple cider vinegar rinse with the rationale that this removes toxic chemicals. If you've ever gotten your hair done with Kanekalon hair and noticed that your scalp was itchy and irritable, and even saw some small red bumps, 
it could be because of the alkaline coating. Braiding hair is sprayed down with an alkaline coating, which is used to help preserve the hair from being moldy, which can cause the scalp to get really dry and itchy when your hair is put in. So with this ACV rinse, we are removing the alkaline coating. This clip is about 35 minutes after I let the braiding hair sit in the water and you can see this white stuff here is the alkaline coating which is the chemicals that they put in the hair. I make sure that I always do an apple cider vinegar rinse prior to braiding my hair. That way the alkaline coating does not irritate my scalp. And it also makes the style last a lot longer because I'm not scratching my scalp as much and I don't have to take any braids out due to irritation. While the apple cider vinegar might reduce the alkaline coating on the hair to some extent, it does not penetrate the synthetic fibers to remove deeper embedded chemicals. In fact, this action may perhaps make matters worse. Neutralizing the coating may actually increase one's exposure to the toxic base materials. A full head of braids can involve 800 grams of chemically processed fibers, exposing the wearers to carcinogens daily. Heat styling techniques like hot water sealing releases toxic fumes, posing not only the risk to the wearers, but to the stylists also. By 2028, the global wig and extension market will surpass $19 billion, with black women as its largest consumer base. The truth is devastating and ironic. The same extensions we buy religiously to do what we coined protective styles, literally has the opposite effect. So what do we do now? How do we move forward? Should we stop wearing synthetic hair? Is all synthetic hair bad? Will human hair be a better option? Is it a necessary evil? Well, how you decide to move forward will ultimately be due to your own personal conviction, but I do have a few suggestions. This to me is by far the best option. It doesn't include any toxic chemicals, no exploitation, no shady business, and that is wearing your own hair. Utilizing your own hair to do braids, curls, twists, whatever the case may be. This is ultimately the best option and it has no downside. Another great option is to embrace natural alternatives. Natural fibers, wool, and other materials that were originally used by our ancestors actually still exist today. And these will align with the traditional practices while ensuring that a symbiotic relationship with nature exists. I have seen a few brands that utilize plants and other natural fibers that are toxic-free, eco-friendly solutions. In Uganda, Julia Tamusime is using banana fibers to make wigs and her extensions as an alternative to synthetic air which is made of plastic fibers. Uh, synthetic air is on the rise globally as it is more affordable than human air. But the material is not biodegradable and when thrown away, it often ends up in landfill sites or clogging water bodies. The synthetic uh, hair is actually made out of plastic. Most women do not know, most people do not know where their hair that they take out of their head actually ends up. It's in our soils, it's in our water, it's everywhere. So for me, it became a concern. Using these uh, organic stems um, gives us a product that is biodegradable. When you, when you expose it to conditions that allow it to rot, it will rot. Plastic does not. It does not disintegrate. It is not uh, biodegradable and because of the nature of its size, 
you know the tiny strands it is easier for synthetic hair to break down into microplastics and microplastics have um, their challenges um, they get into our water bodies easily they can get into the soil they can get into our food chains so the challenge is real and we are cognizant uh, of that Right now, a kilo might cost you about a thousand dollars, okay? And I don't, I don't say that with a lot of, a lot of pride because I know I have a solution that people may not be able to afford. Our game plan is to highly mechanize, okay, so that we can reduce on some of, of these costs, so that we can be able to have a product that is affordable by every single Ugandan in this country but also take care of um, you know other markets uh, in the region in Africa and maybe internationally option three is to demand safer products we are the fuel driving the market we have the power to hold manufacturers accountable demand transparency and stricter regulations it is also very important for us to raise awareness. Share this knowledge with family, friends, hairstylists. What you will notice is that many people simply don't know what's in their hair. I didn't. So together, we can demand or create better, safer solutions. Many of the various toxins that we see or that were originally used in products that were banned is because of the raising awareness aspect of it, as well as, of course, demanding better. When we decide to speak with our money, then the manufacturers, they will listen. So what about human hair? I know that is going to be a very big question that many may ask and I've actually created a video specifically dedicated to that. I will link it below. You can click, check it out and then you can make the decision for yourself. Our hair tells a story and that story deserves to be written without sacrifice. Let's work together to reclaim the narrative and protect ourselves, our sisters and generations to come. Shalom, shalom, and most importantly, shalom.